Hi folks! In this video, I'm going to show you how I built, and then I'll test, a series of acoustic panels that I built to improve the sound in the studio. And, spoiler alert, that's the improved sound that you're hearing right now. Of all the many improvements that I'd like to make to my video production, right up near the top of the list is better audio. I've been watching a number of YouTube tutorials on how to do-it-yourself acoustic panels and uh, my favorite one I'll link below but I've taken ideas from several videos uh, to create my own panels. Basically you have a frame here uh, that holds rock wool and then uh, for the cover I've used felt, craft felt, um, some black and some, whatever that color is, red. And the other idea that I've come up with is that I'd also like to use these uh, as a gobo. So I'm gonna make stands for some of these. Some will go on the roof, ceiling I should say, not outside. And the other idea that I have is I wanna use these like gobos. Uh, in other words, standing, so I'll make stands for them. But also I can use them as reflectors. On the back here, which incidentally has bug netting, to hold the rock wool in place. I'm also going to put on some plasticore, white plasticore, so they can also be used as reflectors for photography. But their main use will be for dampening the sound in this space, my garage slash studio. One of the minor changes that I made from the linked video is the, the corners. Uh, whereas in the linked video, you just used glue and then cut in here I've packaged them like a nice little Christmas present and I find that that ends up looking much better. I did do one original that uh, used his method and it looks kind of funky. It's kind of hard to uh, get these all glued properly and also cutting off the edges here, um, it leaves some ragged, ragged bits. I mean, still functional, but I prefer my method. The other thing that I ended up doing as I moved along is I took the felt right around the back and stapled it, not just relying on the glue, although I did use glue as well here. But I just think that this ends up looking better when these are either mounted on the wall, in the stand, and of course, as I said, my plan is on some of these to put white reflector on the back. So I won't do a full tutorial on how to make these because, as I said, I've linked a very helpful video tutorial down below that I like. But I will say that I'm much faster at producing these than the guy in the video. As I said, I wanted to use these acoustic panels gobo style. So, some scrap wood, a couple of hours labor, and a whole lot of mess. And I think I have a serviceable easel. Coat of black paint, and I think it'll look pretty nice. It's, uh, it's fairly sturdy, I mean, it's real sturdy, it's not going anywhere, but just in case, 
we always sandbag. Before I do install those do-it-yourself acoustic panels, I first of all wanted to do a little bit of an acoustics test to check out the ambiance of this space, my garage forward slash studio, uh, just to see what it sounded like before I installed the panels. And so towards that end, I'm now recording directly into camera via a Rode Stereo Video Pro mic, which is mounted on a boom just out of the frame. And um, so basically, here's just me blabbering to check that out. Uh, maybe perhaps quasi-scientifically uh, to compare, I will read from David Byrne's How Music Works. Just a short uh, paragraph. The technology that allowed sound information, and soon thereafter all information, to be digitized was largely developed by the phone company. Bell Labs, the research division of Bell Telephone Company, had a mandate to find more efficient and reliable ways of transmitting conversations. I also use the Blue Yeti USB microphone, usually to record voiceovers. So I'm, I'm recording off camera right into the MacBook here, and it's set to the cardioid setting, which means that it's just recording from the front of the microphone, which is best for recording voice. So once again, we'll use the David Byrne method to test it. The technology that allowed sound information, and soon thereafter all other information to be digitized, was largely developed by the phone company. And just to sort of match the Rode Stereo Video Mic Pro, this is now being recorded in the stereo setting on the Blue Yeti microphone. The technology that allowed sound information, and soon thereafter all other information, to be digitized was largely developed by the phone company. You'd think I'd have memorized this by now. So finally, here I am, 16 days later, sitting at my new desk, tabletop a gift from a neighbor. I whipped together some trestles in an afternoon to support it. Very proud of those. And the big story, of course, is the audio panels, which I now have all set up here. I've got uh, one here, one here, one here, and one over there. And then on the ceiling, I've got two and a half there. And not to mention it, although I'm about to, in addition to the new absorption panels, I have this existing high-tech diffusion panel right over there. And I think you can tell already that there's a huge difference to the audio in here. Again, I'm recording on the Rode Stereo Video Mic Pro, which is boomed above me here. And it's, it's just awesome. I'm so happy with the result. All the work. <laughs> At one point I was going, this had better work. And I think you can hear it does. Now, here's a distraction-free side-by-side -side before and after comparison to find more efficient and reliable ways of transmitting conversations. To find more efficient and reliable ways of transmitting conversations. To find more efficient and reliable ways of transmitting conversations. To find more efficient and reliable ways to transmit conversations. To find more efficient and reliable ways of transmitting conversations. To find more efficient and reliable ways of transmitting conversations. It's quite apparent that most of the benefit fell to the stereo mics, while the cardioid setting on the Blue Yeti mic was already fairly decent, even without the panels. But I can tell the difference. Can you tell the difference? Was it worth all the trouble? Let me know in the comments. And that wraps it up for this episode. If you found this video useful, give it a like, and please also consider subscribing to my channel if you like this kind of content. I hope this wasn't too tedious. I wanted to cover all the bases here. So, again, that's all for now. Ciao. See you later. It's been an interesting couple of weeks.